Okay, there's more than three MLB games on the slate today, which means Mark Zone and I have some decisions to make. And good news for you, if you don't like having to wait a full nine innings to cash a bet, Mark and I have you covered today. Three, yes, three first five bets for Tuesday. Mark, you had a uh, no-doubter, as I'll say tongue-in-cheek, in the first five yesterday with the Astros. Why don't you get us started for today? Yeah, nothing like uh, winning a bet with one hit. You know, to quote Bob Uger, that's all we got is one Gosh darn hit. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, what the Astros did yesterday. It was good enough to cash our first five bet. But uh, let's go to progressive field today with your boys, the Cleveland Guardians, as they take on the Chicago White Sox. Uh, starting pitching matchup here is what some people would call terrible. Chris Flexen of the White Sox, he's got a very uh, solid 5.13 ERA and a 1.41 whip. Uh, he's given up 13 bombs on the year. This is not a guy who that you want to back in any size, way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, opposing hitters are batting nearly 260 against him on the road. So uh, this is a spot here for a lineup like the Guardians, which hits the snot out of the baseball, particularly at home. Talk about a team that's top 12 in batting average OPS and WRC plus at home on this season. They'll take advantage of Chris Flexen not being very good. Speaking of not being very good, uh, I heard one person describe this pitcher as ass. And that guy's name would be Brian Power. Carlos Carrasco of the Guardians is also not a good pitcher. Three and six on the year, 5.27 ERA, another 1.4 whip. Guy who's given up 13 bombs on the year, uh, has not been a good consistent starter. Kind of question why how he's still in the rotation here as well. But opposing hitters are batting 316 against him at home this year, which is also strange. Now, the White Sox aren't necessarily a great lineup, but you're not getting a great pitcher here. Always give that advantage to the hitter. So, Let's look to the first five for these two starters and go over five. Shop around. I see some five and a halfs out there. I see some fives as well. Obviously, try and get the five just to keep the push in your back pocket, although I don't think we'll need it here between the Guardians and the White Sox against these two starters. that we think we get six runs here. So I'd play this at five or five and a half in the first five to go over. I like it. I also like it's 4th of July week. Seems like only yesterday that you were leading us to victory over the British, Mark. Uh, on that note, Wagertalk.com, currently running a 4th of July special. You can get seven days of winners from your favorite handicapper for only $49. It could be Mark Zinno. It could be me. It could be both of us. Just head on over to Wager Talk right now to take advantage. No coupon code needed. All right, my half of the double play is going to be the Boston Red Sox laying half a run in the first five. They're facing the Marlins. I don't need to tell you that the Marlins stink. Fourth worst record in baseball. Third worst run differential. Belozo sounds like a nice Italian boy there, Zeno. Uh, he's on the mound for the fish today, just his second career start. Meanwhile, guys, the Red Sox back on the road, where they're just simply a much better baseball team. 24 and 16 record away from Fenway this season. They average five runs per game. Uh, you know who else is better away from Fenway? Cutter Crawford, who's on the mound Tuesday. 2.88 ERA on the road. Overall, I've said this before, I think Crawford's pitched much better than his record shows. His problem has been giving up the long ball. But Mark, guess which team has the fewest number of home runs hit in all of Major League Baseball? That would be the Miami Marlins. <laughs> it would be the Miami Marlins. Give that man his prize. And give me the Red Sox minus the half a run in the first five. Smash that like button if you agree. Feel free to comment down below with your favorite bets for Tuesday as well. We always love seeing the feedback, love seeing the comments. We'll get down in there. Our favorite bet coming up in just a moment. But first, Mark, why don't you tell the people what you've got going on today at wagertalk.com. I'd like to thank everybody for at least getting the Jim Abbott reference. A couple of people in the comments yesterday understood our Jim Abbott reference, or at least mine. So at least some of them are cultured and grown and everything else. But Nonetheless, two plays up on the side today, Major League Baseball. May look to add a third at some point uh, if, if, if Brian Bauer can convince me uh, that there is another play out there. We had talked a lot before the show, but go to wt.buzz slash mz. Definitively have two 3% plays coming up here. Best bets for you guys today. Coming off that win yesterday, a 4% winner on the Houston Astros in the first five. Try to keep the momentum going. Again, wt.buzz slash mz, the place to go. Yeah, you mentioned we talked earlier, Mark, and I told you last week I did a double take several days ago when I was looking at the Wager Talk odds screen and saw the name Dallas Keuchel appear next to the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes, Dallas Keuchel is back in the big leagues pitching for Milwaukee and the Brew Crew lose in Coors Field last night. Uh, the series opener, 8-7, that went extra innings. And we think 
with Keuchel on the mound here. He gave up plenty of runs in his first start against Texas. Uh, the Brew Crew were lucky to win that one still, but he gave up runs, and we think the Rockies are going to score plenty of runs early today for our show. Best bet, do we not? Yeah, I mean, look, at this point, Dallas Keiko, guys, is not a major league pitcher. That's just the reality of the situation. He's on a roster, but that doesn't mean he's a major league pitcher. You know, I mean, it's just the reality of the situation. I mean, just because you're in a movie doesn't make you a movie star or an actor. You know, that's what they call extras. And right now, Dallas Keiko is an extra as far as pitching is concerned. But the Brewers are going to trot him out there again. I don't expect him to be very good. Uh, Colorado certainly, you know, not a lineup that necessarily scares you per se, but they are at home. They are in Coors Field. And this is a guy who gave up two bombs in his last start. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I think has to be the biggest concern for Keiko here. Because how do you keep the ball in the ballpark at Coors Field? It's tough for good pitchers to do. He should struggle doing it as well. Um, you know, again, not to mention, you know, the, the eight hits he gave up in four innings. Like, that's another bad sign. You know, guys are making contact against him. So you put all this together here. And what you want to do is take the fourth best bullpen in baseball out of this equation. So we're going to look to the first five of the Colorado Rockies team total and go over here, BP, and just play on the fact that Keiko – will at least give up three or four runs here before he exits. Yeah, he gave up five in that first start. Oh, by the way, 11.74 ERA in his career at Coors for Keuchel. That's not, high. Not good at all. Higher than most um, people we, in Denver. Yes, exactly. And we did a great job with our team totals last week. We won three of the four as show best bets. Yeah. So we look to do it again. Colorado Rockies over two and a half in the first five is your show best bet. Once again, if you agree with us. Feel free to smash that like button. We always appreciate your support here on the Morning Wager, Monday through Friday, dropping free winners in Major League Baseball. Uh, I'm going to have two baseball plays today uh, on my page, wt.buzz slash bp, along with another play in the Euro Cup. We're looking to make it seven straight in the Euro Cup, Zeno. 29-10 and 10 run with all soccer going back to mid-April. Number one last three days, number one last seven days, number one last 30 days at Wager Talk in Soccer. I mentioned the seven-day special earlier where for you can, for $49, you get all of our winners for $7, any handicap you want. Well, if you want to go longer with me, next two and a half weeks, $149 for every winner. No coupon code needed there. It's on my page. And that does it for the morning. Nobody has Wager ever said they want to go longer with BP other than his wife. Well, I and and then to, quite frankly, uh, you know, I, I don't know. We could have a guest appearance from her, and she might have a different pick there. But that's a different show. Explain to me for real a quick. And explain to the audience, since you're such a soccer guru, why does USA Soccer suck? There's a lot of reasons why they they suck. I I think, well, it starts with the players aren't as good, but I think tactically, we are bar like in this tournament. What you saw is they were just they were out tough. The other teams were more physical. We borrow from a more European style. We obviously look to those leagues. So we fall over all over the place? Is that yes, what we do? Well, no, we, get, we, we, get knocked, we get knocked around all over the place and we're upside down like that graphic. And, and that's what happens. I mean, I don't know. I talked about the match with Uruguay yesterday. I wage talk today with Steve Merrill and Teddy. I said that line was insane. Uh, I mean, they oh, there was a – you don't follow soccer, okay, but you understand the concept – of when the must-win nature is priced into a line. Yeah. And that's what you mm -hmm. saw. And th there was a ton of sharp money that came in on Uruguay in the hour or so leading up to that match. It was correct. They win one nil, and the U.S. goes home. There's just, you know, I mean, the, the Panama situation was, was a raw deal, getting the red card, being down 10 men, having the backup goalie in the second half. That was a confluence of unfortunate events. Should they have advanced to the quarterfinals? Yes, they should have. They should not have lost to Panama, but there's no shame in losing to Uruguay, who's just simply a better team. I think the second best team in the entire tournament, quite frankly, as I told oh, Steve. Okay, so, so the Uruguay is like the Dodgers or the Orioles in Major League Baseball right now. Yes, I would say next to Argentina. Don't cry for me, Argentina. They are the best team in the Copa America. Even better than Brazil. I, I would take Uruguay against Brazil right now. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, plenty of soccer, plenty of Major League Baseball. Still on the docket every single day to choose from on my page. Mark told you what he's got. Until next time, let's catch the winners.